off last night. Yeah. Great, great man, get your arms tied behind your back, didn't appear to work. Yeah, g'day, it's, uh, it's Charlie again. Just back off that uh, business trip and um, been playing around with a couple of circuits this morning. Um, if we just do a bit of a zoom in here and we'll walk through the circuit in a sec. Uh, basically now just converted this into a, um, a super heterodyne um, single stage or uh, single conversion super het. So at the moment the RF is coming through on this black cable here is coming into the first homebrew mixer. Let me just see if this is a little bit closer there. So that's exactly the same configuration as the one we made um, a couple of weeks ago. So uh, exactly the same configuration, 4148s uh, and the homebrew um, um, transformers there. Uh, that leads into uh, an IF amplifier here. Um, that's a 3904 and we'll look at the circuit in a sec um, and that then matches into that old crystal I had in the junk box um, couldn't find any spec sheets for this particular crystal so I've just taken a stab in the dark uh, and made an assumption that uh, its impedance is around 500 ohms as a, as a starting one so this transformer here and again look at the circuit is transforming um, that 500 ohms through to 200 ohms for the collector. Uh, the input uh, for the amplifier is 50 ohms uh, and the output of this mixer is 50 ohms so there's no transformer here just straight through the coupling capacitor. Output of that um, filter uh, then leads into a second IF amplifier um, so that's now transforming through this uh, transformer there 500 ohms through to 50 ohms um, and then the output of that uh, trans so again that amplifier is um, 200 ohms back down to 50 ohms for this particular filter here um, and that's working the halfway, like I use really well And if I take the antenna down to dummy load, so that's pretty quiet. And then back up to the antenna again. It's roughly 54 to 1, but that um, alters. Um, uh, just turn off frequency. Um, with no turn, I find it very convenient for um, uh, So that's, uh, that's working really, really well actually. So what I'll do is here, we'll just um, break the video and we'll go and look at the um, look at the circuit diagrams. So both the IF amplifiers are again just a common emitter um, amplifier with a 3904 uh, with voltage divided biasing there. Uh, that transformer, we've got uh, the primary in series with the collector uh, presenting uh, around 200 ohms. So again, 3904, starting off with a, um, an FT or a beta of 300 divided by our 9 megahertz, that's our IF frequency for that particular crystal, gives us a, then a beta at 9 megahertz of 33. Uh, once again, we're going to aim to have roughly 50 ohms looking into this. So I'm going to aim to have beta RE around 50 ohms, uh, noting that the emitter resistor is fully bypassed. So uh, RE then, um, again, is approximately 26 millivolts divided by IE at room temperature. Um, so we can substitute in and then solve for IE, which gives us uh, 17.16 milliamps. Again, our rule of thumb, will for the RE here, we'll set the emitter voltage to be a tenth of VCC, and that'll be 12 volts. So 1.2 divided by our emitter current gives us um, a theoretical emitter res resistor of 70 ohms, so we'll use um, our standard value of 68. Um, then looking for R2, so R2 will have that emitter voltage of 1.2 plus 0.7 for the forward biased um, junction here, gives us 1.9 divided by 10 times, that's 10 times this one, um, base current. Um, 
Now we're going to do a rule of thumb that our emitter current is approximately equal to the collector current. The only difference is, is a small amount of microamps, which is our base current. So if we solve then, we can say here um, our 1.2 plus 0.7, which gives us the voltage there, divided by 10 times, um, i.e. divided by 33, which is our beta, which gives us our base current. So 10 times that gives us 365 ohms, so we'll use the standard value of 390 ohms. For R2, um, if you recall, that one's got 11 times the base current flowing through that one. So we can now solve, and we can say that 12 volts minus the voltage there divided by the current through it from Ohm's law will give us uh, that resistance. So we can say 12 volts minus 1.9 divided by 11 times the emitter current, which is approximately equal to our collector current, divided by beta gives us 1765 ohms, and we'll use 1800 ohms. Um, interesting enough, on LT Spice, I, um, which I won't do on this video, but suffice to say, um, the best emitter bypass res uh, capacity here turned out to be 10 nanofarads which gave um, uh, the best uh, gain for around that 9 megahertz which we're trying to get this amplifier to go in. Uh, this amplifier works particularly well down at the lower frequencies but uh, around 9 megs, like I say, uh, 10 nanofarads was the best option there. So, in terms of the coupling or the impedance matching uh, transformers. So simplistically we've got um, our first mixer going into the first IF amplifier, the crystal filter, second IF amp, and then the product detector. Um, the output of that mixer is 50 ohms, that's going into 50 ohms of this uh, amplifier here, so no impedance matching required there. The output is 200 ohms mixing through to, like I mentioned in the video, an assumption of 500 ohms. Output's 500 back down to 50, and then 200 back down to 50. So looking at that first one, our 200 to 500. Um, if we go with 200 times n squared, gives us 500. Then we can solve for n, and n equals approximately 1.58, so that's our turns ratio, uh, which is approximately equal to 10 turns over 6 turns. So uh, just working out what that's going to be in terms of inductive reactance just to make sure we're in the ballpark of our four times um, the impedance that it's matching <coughs> excuse me and we know that XL equals 2 pi FL where frequency is 9 megahertz uh, six turns on an FT37-43 gives us, gives us uh, 12.6 microhenries which gives us an inductive reactance of 712 ohms um, so that's on the on the 200 side, 4 times 200 equals 800, so we're a little bit under there, but not by much, so we'll give that a go. Um, and then similarly for 10 terms, would give us 35 microhenries, which will give us uh, 17, let's say again 1979 ohms, and 4 times 500 is 2000, so again we're, we're, we're sort of on the, on the margins there of, the, of that sort of rule of thumb, so we'll live with that and we'll give it a go. Uh, for that next transformer, and we're looking at 500 to 50. Again, I won't go through exactly the same logic there. Gives us a turn ratio of 3.16, which is approximately equal to 19 turns over 6 turns, which gives us then uh, our inductive, so again our inductance, therefore our inductive reactance, and here are a much better situation here. Here, uh, 50 ohms times 4 is 200, so we're well in excess of that, which is good and uh, 500 times 4 equals 2,000, and we're at 7,144. Um, so we're looking pretty good there as well. So we'll live with that. Uh, the 200 back down to 500 for that last transformer. Gives us a turns ratio of 2, which is a nice easy one. Um, 12 turns over 6 turns. And again, just running through, there goes our inductance, which we already know. Our inductive reactance and we're well in excess, so 712 ohms when we were after 200, which is good, 
and then uh, 2.8k and we were looking for 800 so um, that's good so we um, so those are the ones that I actually did use in the circuit itself um, and um, certainly that sounded pretty good so haven't done any specific measurements at this point in time but uh, I think for now um, let's take the rubber away I think we'll live with with that at the moment so just recapping again that first IFM didn't require any any matching because it's 50 to 50 there goes that second transformer there just matching the 200 to 500 and that one there 500 back down to 50 and then our last one which was 200 ohms here uh, back down to 50 for the product detector um, I suspect that's well it's all going So that's pretty good. So I'm more than happy with that. Um, so I think next steps for now will probably be to, if I'm particularly keen, um, I might potentially look at redoing those last two transformers there uh, and, and maybe see if, if this was say a thousand ohms, um, which a lot of crystals are, crystal filters. Um, I, I might do that, I might not. Um, if I don't then uh, the next steps will now be, because I'm pretty happy from a receive point of view, um, we will turn this into a transceiver. So we'll get a microphone amplifier up next, and then we can start to um, create some RF, which will then uh, amplify in due course. For interest sake, um, I broke out the oscilloscope before, and uh, the signal generator, and at 9 megs, uh, these uh, amplifiers here were sitting just under um, 20 dB, so um, certainly not as high as it was down at 3 megs, but at the end of the day, um, that's not too bad. From a, from a pure losses point of view, we're, uh, we're only looking at, uh, what, what do I have here somewhere? Unfortunately, I've lost my notes. So. This one, this mixer here, we're probably uh, working on around um, 6 dB in, uh, loss. Uh, this is a, a passive mixer, obviously. Same with this one, so uh, minus 6, minus 6 dB. The crystal filter here, I don't have any specs for that one. Um, even if we decide to go really worst case scenario and go, say, 10 dB. So that gives us 10 plus 6 plus 6 um, is 22. 6 is a 12 plus 10 equals 22. Uh, if this one here is sitting just under 20 and that one's sitting on about 20, then um, I'm doing quite well because uh, as we heard before, in a direct conversion setup, um, we were we were uh, we had some good gain there for the RF. So uh, we've overcome the losses of of these two passive devices and that mixer with the two Wi-Fi amps there. So. Um, I think we've got enough gain for now. Anyway, that's probably enough. I've rambled on long enough. And uh, we'll uh, go from there.